So now we're going to start reassembling the, uh, uh, the basket. So we can put the gasket on again, making sure that the D section, the compressible part of the gasket is facing outwards. Okay, so that's on, that's correct. And the next thing we'll do is we'll just look at the adjustable baffle assembly, how we set that. You'll note on the basket there are essentially here three stay bars, as we call it, around the outside. And the dimension from the stay bar to the end of the basket is critical. That's what sets the compression when it's locked in place. Now the basket retainer sits on that. And as you will see, it is in contact with those stay bars. When it's in compression, it's pushing on those stay bars to lock the basket in. You'll then also notice there is a gap in this case, roughly a quarter inch here, uh, between the end of the basket and the uh, adjustable baffle plate. So something like quarter inch, eighth of an inch, that would be kind of a typical gap, but we can adjust it. So it's just a question of adjusting the position of these bolts, of these nuts on this thread here. We can move this in and out. Okay. So now we'll put the uh, basket back in the sifter. So obviously the gasket goes in first, that's towards the drive end of the machine. As we get to the end of the machine, we'll actually feel it and it'll, it'll move up as I push it onto the pins. So it's just located roughly on those dowel pins. And it's just resting here and here on the bulkhead, essentially, okay? In theory, you can put this either way up. Uh, by default, I generally set one of the pins at 12 o'clock. I usually set one of the basket stays around 12 o'clock as well. That would be typical. Locate on the two dowel pins. And sometimes you have to just put your hand underneath just to locate the basket into the end of the basket retainer. Once it slides all the way in, these uh, pins here should be just very slightly proud of the body of the sifter. And then when we close this oversized end door, the door will push on these uh, pins here, these dowel pins, and put the basket in compression. So as I just close that gently, we'll just walk around the side of the unit and you will notice that the basket is loose. Now this is a deliberate feature, it's there so that you can, by just taking the tension off this end door, rotate the basket for inspection purposes without having to take it out of the machine. However, in operation, it's crucial that this is tightened fully down and the basket is locked in place. So we'll just do that now. We'll just lock it down into compression. So you really just do this pretty much as tight as you can do it by hand. Okay. Once you've done that, this basket should be locked. So it's nice and sturdy, it's not going anywhere. There is on the door of most of the units uh, a little fin, and that's kind of an anti-rotation fin, just in case you've left it loose, it might catch it, or at least alert you that the basket is not locked fully in place. Then simply close the door. In this case, we have some over-center clamps. On a pressure-type sifter, we would have a series of hand wheels to tighten the door down. <laughs> 